Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Integrity Herbicide and Pride Seeds. I'm Calvin Hefner with Real Agriculture and pleased to be joined once again here on the Corn School by Alana Surhan, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds. And Alana, a good portion of Western Canada, you could even say parts, a good portion of North America is looking at uh, dry conditions heading into spring planting season here. What kind of strategies should we uh, be implementing when it comes to corn heading into a uh, possible drought year? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the big looming D word right now is drought. Um, something, you know, every single year it seems to be a new battle for our growers. Um, and, you know, unlike any or just like every other year, we're going to tackle it head on. Um, with the way things are working right now um, in agriculture, everything is a very prescriptive based approach. And we need to tackle this issue no different than that. It's a prescriptive approach as to how we have to handle this spring and this upcoming growing season. So when we talk about potential issues around lack of moisture at planting, there's a couple of things that we need to consider prior to that before we get in the field. And that really comes down to um, ear type, planting population, and potentially leaf type as well. So can you walk us through each of those? Yeah, absolutely. So when we think about ear type and why that's important, um, very often in today's, you know, today's seed world, all of our corn hybrids are generally fixed ears or, you know, some semi-flex ears. Um, and why that is because we want to produce more consistent cobs, right? When that population is high, we want to have more of those consistent ears who are going to put on yield. When we think about, you know, more specifically in Western Canada, um, in areas where we're, we're growing, you know, silage and our yields aren't as high as, you know, our folks, you know, down south, Iowa, etc. We have opportunity and we have the ability to access semi-flex and even full flex eared hybrids. So when we think about, you know, the potential lack of moisture as we head into planting, if we can bump down our population a little bit, that means that our overall water requirement is going to be slightly less as well. And then that flex component is if we do get rain during the growing season and take advantage of it there. Exactly. So if we do end up getting some timely rains throughout this growing season, you know, if we have a semi flex or a full flex ear, even with that population slightly lower, those ears have the potential to flex out if mother nature gives us what we're asking for and they can take advantage and make up or, you know, come close to what that population would have been like with a fixed ear. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about when, it, when you mention uh, reduced plant populations? Is this a few thousand less per acre or what are we looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So a few thousand less per acre, you know, for some, you know, you may think, well, that's not really going to make a big difference, but it really does. Um, you know, so if we're a silage grower and we're typically growing, you know, maybe 30 to, to 32, sometimes 34, depending on what your operation is. If you want to bump that down to, you know, around 30 plants per acre, 30,000 plants per acre, um, that's definitely going to be a good water saving tip for you. Um, and again, if we're using that ear type in, in uh, conjunction with that plant population, we still have the potential to reach our, you know, our similar yields again, if mother nature does cooperate. Okay. You also mentioned leaf type differences in uh, in that leaf structure how does that impact water utilization and water efficiency in corn yeah absolutely so we talk a lot about leaf type typically when we talk about row closure and often it's for weed control um, and you know when we can get that row closed quicker there's less light interception right those weeds aren't able to pop up as quick so we think about that same principle as it relates to water and the loss of you know moisture throughout the day even and throughout how much that can equate to in a year um, so if we have what we call more of a pendulum leaf structure, a leaf structure that's going to stretch out and cover our rows quicker, we can take advantage of, you know, more opportunity of holding on to moisture in our row, right? We don't have that trans evaporation where our morning dew gets burnt off very quickly. You know, if those leaves are stretched out, we can kind of keep that moisture down. It can be utilized by our plants. All right. Finally then, Alana, we know uh, if moisture is fleeting this spring, we know we're supposed to make sure that corn seed has uh, doesn't have a, a cool first drink of water. 
Do we push it a bit on soil temperature if we think we might have a better chance at catching some of that moisture from the, the snow that's melting behind you? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, really, that comes down to a situation by situation basis. At the end of the day, corn will not germinate, okay? Um, you know, any colder than you know eight degrees celsius it just it won't happen so no matter how much moisture is in that soil right if it doesn't get that germination temperature it's not going to happen um and you know if growers are interested in trying to get a few acres in quote unquote early when that soil is fit i think it's a good opportunity to you know maybe put a few of your acres down we definitely don't want to throw all of our eggs in one basket um but something that can you know maybe potentially get you a little bit quicker up and going again soil temp soil temp soil temp um, that's just crucial in decisions and 10 degrees is ideal yes 10 degrees is absolutely ideal 10 degrees celsius you know planting into a warming trend maybe you're going to take advantage uh you know the day you go to plant it is a little bit cooler but that weekend is around the corner and it's going to be up into that you know double digits nice warm temperature if we're planting into a warming trend uh, we're giving ourselves a better opportunity all right thanks for your time and your expertise alana always appreciate it you bet <laughs>